Okay, isograms. They are words where the letters occur same number of times. First of all, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is a continuation of the solution series to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. Said it in all previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula game. This is challenge 200 isograms and we want to identify the isogram from column a so basically if the letters in a word occur same number of times it's an isogram otherwise it isn't so take the word person for example person has six letters and each of them occur once so that's an isogram this word however it is pronounced get g has three g's and three e's so there are two letters each of them occur three times that's also an isogram Basically, there you have it. Very easy from a definition standpoint, but difficult from a formula standpoint. Let me show you one of my two solutions that I've intended to share. I would walk you through using helper columns, and then I'll solve it in one place, as you already expect that I would. Okay, so what's my idea here? The first thing I would like to do is to break down the letters, right? I want to see each of the letters one after the other. I can use the mid function for that. So I take mid, I want to use Vivian for this demonstration. And then we move out the tooltip. Okay, so and if I say one, comma one, meaning the first character, okay, V. I could do the second character, right? That's I. But now I want to get all the characters at once. So I create a sequence, one, two, three, all the way to the length of the string. So I do sequence of the length of that string. Okay. So basically creating a sequence of one, two, in this case, eight. Right. And it gives me all of them at once. Now that I have all the characters or the letters, I now want to know what the unique letters are. So I do unique. Right. And then I select. Okay. Now, these are the unique letters. I now need to know how many times do each of them occur. I'm just following the definition. So I can use a count if, right? And say count if each of this. Okay? And this tells me what I need. Now the question is, are all these numbers the same? Many ways to tackle that. Somebody could take the mean, that's the minimum, and take the maximum. The two of them are the same. Yeah, then I think all of them are the same. Logically, what I could do is I could take the unique of this so more or less like strip this out and see if you get one number then it means those four numbers were the same basically okay if you get two numbers three numbers then they're not the same let me change this from vivian you know to maybe shakespeare uh here okay so you can see here now you see you have two one three let me do a count a here you know so this is our flag if this guy gives us number one, then it's an isogram. If it doesn't gives us, yeah, give us rather, <laughs> then <laughs> um, it's not an isogram. Okay, so meaning that if you change this, let's change this to what we think is an isogram. This one, we should have that number being one. Okay, all right, so good. And that works. The only thing you would realize when we write the formula is that the count if works when you're using the grid because if you look at count if it says it needs a range but when you're using it in the context of the formula you'll be giving it an area that has you know its own implications so in the context of the formula i'm not going to use you know like a count if i'm going to use like a different construct which is like you know a sum construct let me change this to vivian uh yeah just so it's manageable okay so instead of this what i would do is i will use a construct that looks like this i'm going to do a sum and i'm going to check all this right this entire um strip of letters and i'll check if it's equals to this this is going to give me you know true false where it's equal and where it's not equal i just multiply this by one so i can get more or less like the count of it okay so that's the construct i'm going to use um when i write the full form so basically, that's it. So let's go and write the formula now. So I'm going to start off again using Vivian, and then I will expand it to the rest. The way these formulas always work and the way to mastering it is write the formula for one cell, first of all. Once you write it for one cell, you can always expand to the other cells, most likely using the map function, okay? The map function basically says that whatever transformation you have here for one cell apply it to every of the cells in this array or in this range that i'm giving you that's how it works so let's start off i'm going to create a variable you know and that variable is going to represent you know how we started off the first time so mid of 
this, you know, sequence. This is a very popular construct. You could use other constructs to the row rows, you know. But I like this one. Okay, and then you do A. So basically, right, that gives you that. Let me expand the formula bar so I can then start going in and out. All right, so sorry about that. Okay, so now we have that. The next thing that you would do, I mean, if you're following what I did religiously, is you're going to get, you know, a unique list of uh, the alphabet. So you could have done, maybe instead of this, you could have just spilled out, you know, unique of A. Okay, right. And, you know, that's it. So now for each of these alphabets, you now need to perform a calculation on each of them, which is the count if. But because we can't use count if in this context, we're going to use the sum construct. So sum is going to check, you know, the variable A, which is all the alphabets, and check if it's equal to, you know, first of all, if it's equal to V, next if it's equal to I, next if it equals to E, and then equals to N. So I can use the map function for that. So I put the map around, you know, the unique which is like saying it's going to take each of them one after the other. That's the elements of that array, which are V-I-E-N. Okay, and then I need to tell it what I want to do. So for each of them, what do I want to do? I want to do the same thing I did previously, which is do a sum. So you're checking A. A is, you know, V-I-V-E-N-N-E. -N -N -E. That's Vivian, everything. You're checking if that A is equal to the particular alphabet that you have chosen at this point in time, which is represented by X. But don't forget that because this is going to give you a boolean, you need to then do, you know, times one. Okay. So that's basically that. Close that. Close the map and close the let. Okay. So this gives you, you know, the count. So that's the count for each of those alphabets. If you remember, V I E N 2 2 2 2. What do you need to do at this point? You want to take a unique of it. So unique would then tell you, you know, oh, okay, these are the numbers we have in here. So do unique. Okay. Basically that's unique now what's the next thing you want to do a count a on top of that right so that this really is the flag okay so this tells you one let's go to one that we are sure is not um let's see intestines i think this is not okay is that oh that is sorry okay axiomatic yeah okay so anyone that gives you any number other than one is not an isogram anyone that gives you one is an isogram Okay, so basically we have a formula that at least gives us, you know, what it is that we want. So now that we have this working for one cell, you know, we can just use the map function to extend this, you know, to all the other cells. So that's why I say always make it work for one cell. That's how these formulas are built. Once it works for one, you can expand to the others. Okay, so now that we have this, we are now going to do like a map, right? So basically we are going to just put a map around this and now for the map. Our first array is everybody in here. Okay. Let's go down. And then we put a lambda. We create a variable. That variable is going to represent. So in this case, I've used the variable P. I want P to represent every of the elements of this array. Meaning the first time it goes through, P will represent A2, which will be dialog. It will perform this entire transformation on that word. And it will return a number for us, whether 1, 2, or 3. Then it will go to the next one, which is going to be deed, and it's going to perform the same thing. So to expand this formula, don't forget that I wrote it pointing to A5, right? Because that's when I was dealing with Vivian. But now that I've created a variable P, which at every point in the iteration, P represents, you know, um, the elements of that array. I will simply change this A5 to P, okay? So that's basically what it is now. That's all that needs to happen, right? So I know I would need two brackets, one here and one here. So basically, that's it. So now you have an array of, you know, the counts, more or less, like whether you have it's unique or not unique. So anyone that gives us one is obviously an isogram. The others are not. So now that we have this, we can use this in our filter function because what we are trying to do really is we are trying to filter this, you know, um, range as in based on whether they're isograms or not. So we are saying filter this ring based on if this number is equals to one or not. That's basically what we are doing. So what we are going to do is we are going to come here and we are going to do a filter. And we are filtering, you know, this same range. Okay, right. And we are filtering this range where this entire thing here, this whole thing which gives us those numbers, where it is equals to one. Where it is equals to one, that's, you know, an isogram. Otherwise, it's not. You close the bracket and you should be fine. Okay, and basically you have 
it in one formula. That's kind of how it works. So the same logic, you know, like showing you with helper columns, which of course you can set it up that way, but you can also fuse it into one formula. I hope, you know, you enjoyed you know, this video. I'm going to show you the second solution. That one uses an M malt, you know, just to whet your appetite, you know. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.